It is now time for oral questions. I recognize the member for Temiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier, and this is a question about the ethical standards the Premier holds for himself and his staff, a matter of public importance. Speaker, yesterday, CBC News reported concerning revelations regarding the Premier's friend Jason Kenney, leader of the United Conservative Party of Alberta. According to CBC, email addresses linked to certain Conservative domain names were fraudulently attached to Conservative Party memberships and used to cast ballots in the party leadership race. Among the domain names was deanfrench.ca. Has the Premier talked to Dean French, his chief, of, his chief of staff, about this incident? I had difficulty hearing the member's question because of the interjections that were coming from the government side of the House. And I would ask the member for Niagara West to come to order. To call upon the premier to reply. Well, through through you, Mr. Speaker, I, I was in the same boat as you. I couldn't hear the, what he was saying over there, but I, I can tell you one thing: this is going to be a great day for Ontario. It's a great day because we're turning the budget. We're presenting the budget today. We're turning the province around. We're putting more money back in the taxpayers' pocket. We're respecting the taxpayers, and we're going to continue doing this for the next three years. Supplementary. Again to the Premier, a former Conservative member of Alberta's legislature has written the RCMP about this matter. He alleges that the Kenny leadership campaign used fraudulent, e fraudulent emails to intercept personal identification numbers needed to cast a ballot in the leadership race. And CBC reports that some of those addresses come inside, were linked come to, order. to a website bearing the name of Dean French, the Premier's Chief of Staff. The Premier's office said yesterday that Dean French no longer owns that web domain. When did he cease to own the website that bears his name, and does he know who owns it now? The Minister of Children, Community and Social Services must come to order. Premier. Uh, House Leader. Questions referred to the government. House Leader. <laughs> Speaker, this is, this is a pathetic, pathetic line of questioning. It's a shame that the Ontario NDP feels that it has to do the bidding of the Alberta NDP and Rachel, Rachel Notley, who's about to go down in flames in the Alberta election next week, Mr. Speaker. There is nothing to this whatsoever that deals in any way with government policy here in the province of Ontario. I can't believe that with a budget a budget about to be tabled in Ontario, a budget that's going to work towards our promises of ending hallway health care, creating good jobs in Ontario, putting more money back in the pockets of Ontarians, that the member from Northern Ontario wouldn't be standing up and advocating for jobs in Northern Spons. Ontario, ending hallway health care in Ontario. Instead, he's on a partisan trip on behalf of Rachel Notley and the NDP in Alberta. Okay. House will come to order. Restart the clock. Final supplementary. This concerns the ethical standards the Premier sets for himself and staff in his office. It's a matter of public record that the Premier is an avid supporter of Jason Kenney and his bid to become Premier of Alberta. Now, now we see a website 
bearing the name of the Premier's Chief of Staff, suddenly appear at the allegations concerning Jason Kenney and election fraud. Has the Premier instructed his Chief of Staff to turn all relevant information over to the RCMP officers who have been asked to investigate this matter? Mr. Speaker, even the CBC today, even the CBC, Mr. Speaker, is reporting that it's not Dean French's website. It has nothing to do with Dean French. It has nothing to do with our government here in Ontario. I think it's absolutely shameful, and it's a desperate attempt for this NDP party here in Ontario to try and prop up the NDP in Alberta, a government that has seen hundreds of thousands of jobs leaving, leaving Alberta, Mr. Speaker, a, a government in Alberta that has increased taxes, a government that has made it more difficult to live affordably in the province of Ontario. It's exactly what we don't want to see here in Ontario. The policies of the NDP in Alberta Spons. would be the policies of the NDP here in Ontario. We don't want to have any part of that, Mr. Speaker, and the people of Ontario didn't either. That's why they voted for us. The House will come to order. The government side will come to order. Restart the clock. The next question, the member for Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Speaker, this question is also about the ethical standard that the Premier holds for himself, his staff, and as a matter of public importance. Speaker, the Premier has made no secret of his close friendship with Jason Kenney. The Premier flew out to Alberta to campaign with him, and I think the Premier even referred to his relationship with Jason Kenney as a bromance. Speaker, we've since learned that the RCMP has launched an investigation into possible voter fraud, and now there are new revelations Government concerning side, a website door. bearing the name of the Premier's Chief of Staff. Speaker, what assurances can the Premier offer that no one in his office or in his party is in any way implicated in these matters? Premier. Well, through you, Mr. Speaker, thank you for the compliment, uh, the, the compliment about the bromance. <laughs> you know something? I think the world of Jason Kenney, you know, I think the world of the people out in Alberta. The people of Alberta have been punished way too long. People are losing their jobs. They want to build a pipeline. They've had roadblocks from uh, Premier Notley. It's just over and over again. But guess what, Mr. Speaker? There's a blue sweep going right across this country. And it's going to continue with Alberta. And I can't wait to have the new Premier of Alberta, Jason Kenney, right here to visit us in Ontario. Come to order. The government side must come to order. Government House Leader has to come to order. The Minister of Children, Community and Social Services has to come to order. Start the clock. Supplementary. Speaker, the Premier may not take these allegations seriously, but thankfully the RCMP are taking it very seriously in Alberta right now. Speaker, late night, uh, last night on the CBC's The National, even Jason Kenney, the Premier's bromance uh, friend, has had to admit that these new revelations were concerning. The RCMP are currently conducting an investigation, and a website bearing the name of Dean French, the Premier's Chief of Staff, is tied up in the middle of all this. Speaker, if Dean French no longer controls the website, who does and why is it linked to voter fraud in the province of Alberta? Premier. Minister of Natural Resources. The question is referred to the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. Well, thank you very much, uh, Speaker. And I want to thank, I want to thank uh, the member. Well, no, I don't want to thank him for this question because this line of questioning 
it has reached a new low in this House. As a matter of fact, we might be able to use some of those questions to help us dig some of those subway tunnels that we're going to bring, bring transit to the City of Toronto, because they're about below anything that I've seen in this House before. But the reality is here. We're in the, a historic day in the province of Ontario, where we're, we're going to deliver the best budget and the first really great budget in 15 years in this province. And the NDP want to engage, engage in a line of questioning that has absolutely nothing to do with what is going on here in the province of Ontario. A budget that is going to lift people here in the province of Ontario, change the channel from 15 years of destruction Lots. under the Liberals. We are turning things around under the leadership of Premier Ford. You should get on board with us. We start the clock. Final supplementary. Speaker, this is a chance for the Premier to set an ethical standard for himself and his caucus. They should actually be thanking us for that opportunity. If the, Speaker, if the following Inside, investigation, when police find that there was evidence of election fraud and that Dean French, the Premier's chief of staff, was directly involved, what action will the Premier take? Questions been referred to the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. Well, we'd like to give the NDP an opportunity to change that line of questioning into something that brings positive results for the people of Ontario. Here we are today, April 11, 2019, a historic day in the Ontario Legislature, a historic day for the people of Ontario. A budget brought forth by my colleague, the Minister of Finance, Vic Fideli, that is going to change the Member for Essex will come to order. I apologize to the Minister. Conclude your answer. Just trying, just trying to help them out, Speaker. Here we have an opportunity for the NDP to actually join with us. We've had 15 years of negatives from the people on the other side who are now can, cannot form a, an, an actual party. Now we have a chance to turn Ontario around. Our first budget. Listen to what we're saying. Get on board Response. with us. Get on board with us. This is going to be a great day for the people of Ontario. Order. Next question, the member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Education. Yesterday, the Toronto District School Board released their accounting of what the government's cuts to education will mean to them, and it's not good. The Toronto School Board alone will lose over $28 million next year, requiring them to make cuts and offer students less programs less opportunities. And, and let's point out also, with the existing shortfall that already exists, they're going to be down about $55 million. When will the minister learn that every dollar taken out of our education system leaves our young people worse off? Questions posed to the Minister of Education. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And first of all, I'd like to respond by saying the PC government of Ontario is going to be investing in education like never before. And I'm very, very to carry on with regard specifically to TDSB, you know, I appreciate the fact there are, that there are some school boards experiencing financial pressures of teacher salaries and benefits due to proposed changes in class size. However, Speaker, school boards are left in this position as a result of poor negotiated local collective agreements. That's the reality. And so the fact of the matter is, the Ministry of Education does not have any authority over locally bargained collective agreements. And so we're going to be working with school boards as we go forward. As I mentioned on the onset, Response. we're going to be investing in education and we're going to help school boards get it right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I think the minister, and I'm going to go back to the minister here, uh, needs to go back to minister school and learn something about how we fund education and how collective agreements are bargained in this, in this province. The Toronto District School Board government has already order. raised the alarm bell about the government's cuts to education, saying they will be forced to eliminate 800 high school teacher positions. That means fewer course offerings for students like art and shop classes and music and technology that help 
foster well-rounded kids. It means larger class sizes and less one-on-one -on -one attention, and it means less opportunity for our young people. Instead of gutting our education system, will the minister go back to the drawing board and come back with a plan that actually works for students? Well, thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to sending some correspondence over to the member opposite to explain really how it works. But that said, I am so excited about our plan for education here in Ontario. It's a plan for education that's going to work for you and teachers and parents and everybody in this province, because we're getting education in Ontario back on track. We've listened to 72,000 individuals that took time, thoughtful time, to contribute their ideas and their suggestions to get it right, and that is exactly what we're going to do by focusing on math, by focusing on STEM, by making sure that we have an education system in Ontario that's sustainable because our students deserve the very best in education so that they have confidence in their career paths. And that said, we're also going to be recognizing the importance Response. of skilled trades and actually sculpting our education pro uh, programs to make sure that they are relevant for jobs and careers, not only for, for today, but into tomorrow and the here, future here. as well. Thank Next question, the member for Scarborough, Rouge Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday was a historic day for Ontario. For the first time ever, the Ontario government is taking the lead in building new subways in this province. Our Premier announced a $28.5 billion expansion to our province transit network to get Ontarians moving. This transit plan is for the 21st century by far most of most money ever invested to get shovels in the ground and to get new subways built. Commuters across GTHA want seamless network that will get them to work on time and back to their friends and families faster. This is especially true for the residents of Scarborough who has been waiting for over 30 years for access to the subway system. Mr. Speaker, this is promise made, promise kept. Can the Premier please tell, detail us how government for the people's transit system will benefit the residents of Scarborough and connect them to a truly regional transit system? Questions to the Premier. Through, through you, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the great MPP from Scarborough Rouge Park. The people out in Scarborough are incredible people. I can tell you for nine years we fought for the people of Scarborough to get subways. Yesterday, we finally blazed a new trail for every single person, the 630,000 people that live out in Scarborough that have been starving for subways for 30 years. Now they're going to be able to expand the opportunity where they work because they're going to have rapid transit in Scarborough, a three-stop subway, and it was very personal. Mr. Speaker, my brother Rob started, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't even have a Scarborough subway right now. People of Scarborough, we said we were going to deliver a subway. We're delivering a subway to the people of Scarborough. Order. 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 Restart the clock. Supplementary question. Thank you, Premier, for that answer. It's great to hear that our government for the people is sticking to our promise to finally delivering transit to the residents of Scarborough. For decades, there has been little new transit built. Our subway system has not kept up with the growth of GTHA. Technology in the subway is outdated, and much needed maintenance has been put off for far too long. My constituents want to be able to get to work and home on time, leaving more time for what matters. Can the Premier tell us more about our government's $28.5 billion transit plan is breaking down barriers to make subway work more for the people in more communities like Scarborough? Premier? Sure. Through, through you, Mr. Speaker, again, I want to thank our MPP for the question. But do you know who gets more thanks than anyone? The best Minister of Transportation. <laughs> 
absolute champion. He's incredible. You know, some it takes a true leader to put this plan together, the largest transit plan, not only here in Canada, but in North America, $28.5 billion. And our minister was the one who created this plan, who's going to execute this plan and get Ontario moving once again. He's taking care of the people of Scarborough. He's taking care of the Eglinton line going west all the way to the airport. And I talked to a lot of people who, that work up the airport. They're just over the top. Second largest employer in Canada, the airport is. And then our crown jewel, our crown jewel is the Ontario line. Again. Again, thanks to our great Minister of Transportation, his idea, he is transforming. Thank you. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. Next question. House come to order. Restart the clock. The question is for the member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. In the past, we've seen governments make big grand promises on transit, only to find out that the realities on the ground are way off from what was first announced. Yesterday, the Premier drew lines on a map and pulled numbers out of a hat to try to explain how much his new plan would cost and when it would actually be delivered. Could the Premier show us the evidence, the planning studies and cost estimates for how he got to these magic figures? Questions to the Premier. Minister of Transportation. Referred to the Minister of Transportation. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thanks to the member opposite for this question. Yesterday was a historic day for the province of Ontario. Mr. Speaker, we sat with the Premier of Ontario, the Minister of Infrastructure, Monty McNaughton, my PA, Kinga Surma, Stephen Lecce, PA, Mr. McNaughton, and Christine Hogan, ex Tobacco Lakeshore. Yes. All together, we announced a historic build for the City of Toronto and helping the GTA. We are going to build the long-related relief line called the Ontario Line, Mr. Hey, Speaker. Hey, hey. We are going to build the Young Extension, Mr. Speaker. We are going to build into Scarborough three stops of what the people yes. would like. Yes. And finally, we're going to go to the west of Edmonton, underground for the people of Etobicoke, and make sure that we can get out there to the airport. Mr. Speaker, the NDP should be happy about this bill. It is affecting their own constituents. It's giving them a better transit opportunity. But most of all, Mr. Speaker, it's creating the regional transportation network that we need in the GTHA. Mr. Speaker, the Ontario government of the PC party is going to build, build, build. Thank you. Stop the clock. The government side will come to order. <coughs> Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry will come to order. <coughs> Member for Essex will come to order. Restart the clock. Supplementary question. Back to the Premier. The City of Toronto has already spent several years and millions of dollars on plans for the relief line. The Premier now wants to rip all these plans up and start all over again. How can the Premier defend starting again from scratch when we know that will mean delays, it will mean Torontonians are stuck in overcrowded trains and stations, and it means people in Scarborough will be stuck in buses for years? Wow. Question is to the Minister of Transportation. Uh, thanks again, Mr. Speaker, for that question. Um, you know, the member opposite herself was in the technical briefing uh, prior to the announcement, so she has seen the plans and how detailed uh, the operations are going forward. And, and I can tell you right now, Mr. Speaker, we are going to utilize the plans that have already been developed to this part, but we're going to extend it further, Mr. Speaker. We're not just going to build the relief line. We're going to build the Ontario line, which goes from Ontario Place up to the Ontario Science Center. Mr. Speaker, we're just not going to build one stop in Scarborough. We're going to build three yeah. stops in Scarborough. Yeah. Mr. We're going to utilize those plans. But let me hear. You know, Mr. Speaker, maybe the NDP should stop and listen to what the regional mayors are saying to this uh, uh, this oh, announcement. Mr. Yeah. Mayor Scarpetti, the Young yeah. North subway extension is on the move. I am thrilled with the provincial government's 228.5 million transit. 
Mr. Speaker, Fox. the Mayor of Vaughan, Vaughan and York Region's voices are heard. Commuters in Vaughan, York Region, the GTA Look Forward yeah. Access Transit. Mayor John Tory, I'm happy they have committed themselves to a very substantial investment in public transit. Hop on board. Thank you. The House will come to order. Start the clock. The next question, the member for Thornhill. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the fantastic Minister of Transportation. Yesterday, the Premier, Minister of Transportation, Minister of Infrastructure, the Parliamentary Assistant for Transportation, the Parliamentary Assistant for Infrastructure, and the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore made a huge transportation announcement. Our government for the people made a commitment during the election to get the people of Ontario moving. And part of that commitment was to upload the responsibility of the subway infrastructure and build subways faster and more effectively. We are doing just that. Yesterday, our government unveiled a new transit map, a vision for the 21st century with connections to communities and to jobs and places that have never been joined by the subway system before. Can the Minister of Transportation share with this legislature how our transit plan will benefit my riding of Thornhill? Thank you. Minister of Transportation. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the member for Thornhill for that question. I got to say, the member from Thornhill daily talks to me about improving transit in her region. I thank her very much for it. Mr. Speaker, as I, as I announced earlier, it was a historic day for the province of Ontario. We had quite a turnout uh, from the media and, and people that were interested in, in this announcement. The Premier, the Minister of Infrastructure, the Parliament Assistants, uh, Steve Lecce, Christ, uh, King of Surma, and Christine Hogarth from Etobicoke Lakeshore. It was a great day announcing a $28.5 billion investment uh, in expansions of the subway system. The member of Thornhill should be grateful to know and, and happy that uh, the Young North Extension is going to benefit her riding and her constituents, Mr. Speaker. They're growing populations, there's growing demand to utilize transit, and that's why we're, we're going to build outside of the city limits. Response. We're going to expand to where it's needed. The Young Extension will be 7.4 kilometer extension north from Finch Station, connecting Richmond Hill, Vaughan, and Markham to the subway system. And, Mr. Speaker, I have more to say in our supplemental. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you to the Minister for that great response, and Mr. Speaker, our government is delivering on our promise to build a regional transportation network. Yeah. And the residents of Thornhill are thrilled about this announcement and the transit connectivity that will be unlocked to countless job opportunities for people across the region. It was great to see Mayor Scarpitti, Barrow, Bevilacqua, as well as Regional Chair Emerson at the announcement yesterday showing their support for this historic investment. Mr. Speaker, transportation is not something to play politics about. The people of Ontario and the GTHA have waited long enough. It's time to invest and build new transportation so that the people of this great province can get to work on time, get home faster, get to family and friends sooner, and maybe get to see a game downtown every now and then. Can the Minister of Transportation tell us more about the benefits of the Young Subway Extension? Minister of Transportation. Thanks again, Mr. Speaker, and thanks again the member from Thornhill for that question. People from north to south of the Toronto region will be connected to new jobs and new opportunities. And the Premier and I have challenged officials to ensure this line is in service as soon as possible. We will build it in conjunction with the Ontario line, and this line will open soon after that line is up and running. Mr. Speaker, we're doing this because we've talked to transit users and heard their frustrations, crowdings and delays, and subway lines that just don't go far enough. People are counting us to make their commutes better and to get started right, right away. For years, construction, for extensions and new lines, Everything's been stuck in red tape, Mr. Speaker. We've taken out the scissors, we've cut away the red tape, and we're going to build, 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 Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Next question, member for London North Centre. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Education. <clears throat> Yesterday, I asked the Minister to name homophobia and transphobia to recognize the Day of Pink. The Minister deliberately refused to, thereby contributing to the exclusion of LGBTQ students 
first excluded from Ontario's regressive 1998 curriculum, and now even excluded from international days meant to recognize and support them. How can LGBTQ plus students and families count on this minister to combat homophobia and bullying in our schools when she won't even acknowledge its existence in this chamber? Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. I think it really matters in terms of what is said in the public domain. And again, words backed up by action is so, so important. And it all starts with respect on every single side of a situation. It starts with respect. And that's why I am so proud of the health and physical education curriculum that we're developing and we're going to be releasing in September of 2019. Students today need to know how to respect one another and accept one another and use technology safely and know and know and accept what healthy relationships look like so we can put an end once and for all to homophobia and transphobia. Seriously, Speaker, this is not, this is so not a place to play politics. Unbelievable Response. that these people are taking a serious subject and trying to play politics when I, as Minister of Education, and this entire government, the PC government of Ontario, are trying to Thank you. Speaker, I'm glad to hear the minister finally use those words, but she's a day late. Instead of addressing okay, forms order. of discrimination head-on, we've heard the minister resort to name-calling, using the letters NDP to change into different words, using poisonous rhetoric like failed liberal ideology when talking about the health and phys ed curriculum, and using dismissive terms for Ontarians such as certain groups. Speaker, exclusion is dehumanizing. Instead of condemning discrimination, the minister has said that she embraces healthy relationships. At the same time, this minister has made it harder for LGBTQ plus students to learn about what healthy relationships look like. She's delayed teaching about important issues like gender expression until grade eight. LGBTQ plus students deserve the same access to information that their heterosexual peers have. Question. Does the minister believe LGBTQ plus relationships are healthy relationships, which deserve equal recognition in the classroom? Right on. Minister of Education. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I, I am really pleased to stand any day in this House to talk about where we've landed when it comes to health and physical education curriculum, because again, 72,000 people chose to get engaged, be it town halls, telephone town halls, or online surveys, or actually taking time to submit written ideas, suggestions, concerns that we all took into consideration. And at the end of the day, we've landed in a really good place when it comes to health and physical education. Even organizations like uh, um, the, the phys ed, the provincial phys ed organization, Ophia. I can't think of it, Ophia. Ophia. Ophia, they said every student is going to recognize themselves in our health and physical education curriculum. And the, it goes beyond. This is the first time ever we're going to be addressing mental wellness, mental health and wellness, Response. starting in grade one right through to grade 12. And the fact of the matter is we're hitting the mark with this health and education, uh, this health and physical education curriculum, no matter how the members opposite try to paint it. I'm very proud of where we're going. Thank you. Order. Next question, the member for Ottawa South. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Good morning, Premier. How? It's still morning. It's not after. I know you're excited. It's like Christmas. Look, I, I, I want to, um, in a sense, say it's your, it's your government's first budget, and it's an important day in the life of a government. So yeah, I want to wish you in a, in a, a nonpartisan way good luck and, and that uh, families will be looking for things in, inside your budget that are important to them. And, and those measures, uh, Premier, or, uh, Speaker, through you to the Premier, they'll be looking for in that budget. We'll all be in the lockup. Everybody, our staff are there looking right now and we're digging down. So we know that one of those measures in the budget is to spend millions and millions of dollars on taxpayers of taxpayers' money on partisan election advertising Question. to prop up their friend Andrew Scheer. Does that does the premier think that that's appropriate? Order, order, premier to reply. Speaker, 
That is the pot calling the kettle black. Unbelievable. They wasted hundreds of millions of dollars with their propaganda ads, telling the people of Ontario all the great things. Meanwhile, they were misleading the public. Oh, okay. The Premier has slipped out. Slipped out. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. They were, I, I tried to put it back in there. Anyways, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, as they, as they were wasting billions of dollars of the hard-earned taxpayers' money, we ended up with a $15 billion deficit. That's $15 billion that every single man, woman and child is going to have to pay back. We're going to have a responsible budget. We're going to have a thoughtful budget. And at the end of the day, we're going to do this responsibly and we will balance. Response. We will balance that budget eventually and make sure that we put more money into the taxpayer's pocket. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. So I, I will, um, I, I'll take that as that he believes that that spending is appropriate. So, simple question. Just in the in the interest of transparency. No, this is this is no, this is serious. This is serious. 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 Stop the clock. The government side will come to order. Allow the member for Ottawa South to place his supplementary question. Start the clock. Once again, the member for Ottawa South. Wait, will you be registering as a third party in the federal election? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Questions to the Premier. Uh, you know something? Will you? <laughs> you can't, I can't even uh, take the member seriously, Mr. Speaker. We are going to be working for the next three, three years and three months, making sure we fix the problem. Do you know why we're going to fix the problem? The people up there, those young students, need a future. They want, once they graduate, they're going to want a job. They want their parents to be able to afford to put them through university. They want to make sure they have a responsible government, and that's exactly what we're going to deliver on this budget. Thank you. The next question, the member for Etobicoke Centre. My question is for the Deputy Premier, Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Mr. Speaker, our government promised to make mental health and addictions a priority during the election. I have been hearing from my constituents that they cannot access the mental health services they need when and where they need them. With one in five Ontarians affected by mental health, it is clear that this issue affects every person in the province, directly or indirectly. Can the minister please inform the members of this legislature what our government is doing to address mental health in the province of Ontario? The Deputy Premier of Health and Long-Term Care. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member from Etobicoke Centre for her question. This is an important issue for the people of Ontario, and our government believes that no one should have to wait long periods of time to receive mental health and addiction services. That's why we are investing $3.8 billion to expand our mental health programs and services across the province. We have already announced the first wave of funding that includes adding more than 50 new mental health beds, but of course there's a lot more to do. We've also held a series of engagement sessions across the province to understand what additional supports and services are necessary. We look forward to hearing from all members of the legislature on this issue. These discussions will help inform our decisions as we establish a connected and comprehensive mental health and addiction system in Ontario. Response. And we will continue to make mental health a priority in this government to address the needs of all Ontarians. So Thank you. Supplementary question. Mr. Speaker, back to the minister. Every day, our dedicated police officers work tirelessly to keep our community safe. These brave men and women frequently put themselves in harm's way or witness highly traumatic events in the course of their duties. Tragically, far too many officers and their families have suffered as a result. Police officers face a unique type of stress, and the current system isn't responsive to the realities frontline officers encounter on a daily basis. Mr. Speaker, can the minister please tell this House how our government is addressing the mental health crisis in the Ontario Provincial Police? Thank you. 
Minister to reply. Questions referred to the Solicitor Thank General. You, Speaker. Etobicoke Centre. I know that she understands uh, very well how important this is to our government, and I appreciate your advocacy and assistance. You know, it's uh, it's heartbreaking when we hear that 13 OPP officers have taken their life, and we need to do a better job to protect the people who, frankly, have done such an excellent job protecting us. The OPP officers have always answered when the people of Ontario have called for their help, and it's now time for our government to step up and assist them. It's why our government was proud to announce, in conjunction with the Ontario Provincial Police Association, launching a new integrated mental health support program for OPP officers and their families. This is something that is critically important to our government. We're going to get Response. it right, and we're going to partner with the people who can provide the service and make it better for our frontline officers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question, the member for Sudbury. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Minister of Labour. The Minister of Labour has a vital role in the province and a responsibility to show leadership when it comes to collective bargaining and labour relations in Ontario. On Monday, the member for Oshawa asked the minister a question about the premier's characterization of elected union leaders as thugs. Speaker, the minister didn't provide an answer, so I'd like to give her a second ch chance. Does the minister responsible for labour relations in the province of Ontario agree with the premier that labour leaders are, and I'm going to quote, thugs, or will she take this opportunity to distance herself from the premier's comments? Questions to the minister of labour. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, I, I just want to inform the member uh, across the way of what the Ministry of Labour actually does. It's, it's required by law to act as a neutral overseer for the labour relations process in the province of Ontario. We as the Ministry of Labour provide neutral conciliation and mediation services with the aim of helping bargaining parties conclude collective agreements without work disruptions. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, we want the two parties to come to the table, uh, to the employer and the bargaining units. The Ministry of Labour has an excellent record. 98% of all agreements are reached without strikes or lockout. That's great. The Ministry of Labour pocket. provides services, Response. mediators, conciliators to help both parties deal with that. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, I just wanted to clarify that for the member opposite the role of the Ministry of Labour in the issues and to the question that he asked. Thank you very much. Supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker. The, the, the minister told me what the ministry does. I'm asking her about the comments the Premier made about calling union leaders thugs. So, to quote the minister herself from last week, we have in the province of Ontario, with this party and this government, a good working relationship with unions, which is a great sentiment that was echoed today, but doesn't square with the words the Premier made, who called the elected union leaders thugs. Ontarians need to have faith in the principles of good faith of the ministry. So will the Minister of Labour clearly state that the Premier's comments were unacceptable? Thank you. Back to the Minister of Labour. The President of the Treasury Board, Mr. Speaker. Questions referred to the President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, yesterday we were pink uh, for bullying, uh, anti-bullying. Uh, it's uh, beyond me to understand where this uh, member opposite through you is coming from, Mr. Speaker. Our Premier is for every Ontarian. He's for every family. He's for every worker. He's not a thug. He's working for the people of Ontario. And today is a special day because my good friend and colleague, the Minister of Finance, is going to deliver the best budget in the history of Ontario today. Hey! We've got transit going. We've got the people moving. We are getting jobs. We're getting people moving to jobs. And, Mr. Speaker, we're going to get moving on a path to balance. That's what we're going to do. Thank you. The next question, the member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Labour. For 15 years, Northern Ontario suffered as the Liberal government threw up roadblocks and barriers that prevented entrepreneurs, companies, and resource users from investing in and contributing to the economic development of Northern Ontario. So, Speaker, I, I know our government is working hard to repair the damage done by the Liberals. 
We are taking concrete steps to remind the people of Northern Ontario that, yes, their provincial government does, in fact, care about the well-being of Ontario families who live north of Barrie. This week, the minister made an announcement that will make Northern Ontario's mining industry safer and more prosperous. So I asked the minister, would you please inform uh, the House on what our government is doing to, to protect Northern Ontario miners and encourage safe economic growth in the north? The minister of Labour. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for Perth Wellington for all his hard work that he does in this legislature and for his constituents. And on Tuesday, I had the great pleasure of visiting the Ministry of Labour Materials Testing Laboratory in Sudbury, where I announced our government's investment of almost $2.6 million in a new tensile testing machine. Expected to be operational by next spring, this state-of-the-art machine will be able to test both wire ropes and synthetic ropes, which are likely to be used in the future. Our PC government's new investment will put Ontario on the leading edge of mine safety for the next 25 years. Mr. Speaker. Rope safety is essential for mine operators to ensure their mines are operating safely and reliably. This new machine will help to keep Ontario workers in the mining sector Once. safe. Our government is bringing good jobs and investment to the north. We're sending the signal that the rest of the province and northern Ontario is open for business and open for jobs. Thank you. Supplementary question. Uh, thank you, Speaker, and I'd like to thank the Minister for her, her commitment to the safety of all workers in this province, including miners. This exciting announcement is great news for northern communities benefiting from our investments in mining test facilities. We are delivering on our promise to strengthen Ontario's mining sector, Mr. Speaker. Our government is committed to attracting new investments to the industry because it creates so many opportunities, especially in northern communities. So the money comes we are attracting new investments in Ontario as we move forward with our open for business mandate. Speaker, can the minister please tell the members of this House about how our government is making Ontario's mining sector open for business? Back to the Minister of Labour. Minister of Energy, Northern Development and Mines. Questions referred to the Minister of Energy, Northern Development and Mines. Thank you, Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, like the Minister of Labour, the Ministry of Northern Development and Mines is con committed to the safety and evolving safety technologies for our mines, uh, Mr. Speaker. And we're also interested in actually opening mines. The previous government has a poor record in these regards. Seven years, eight years, 15 years for mines to open. Mr. Speaker, it's ridiculous. That's why the Premier and I uh, struck a mining working group. We have leaders from all aspects of this industry, finance, prospectors, people who build large-scale mines, Mr. Speaker, and operate them. And we're looking forward to a brighter future for the mining sector, Mr. Speaker. And I'm excited about this afternoon as a Northern MP from our caucus delivers a budget, Mr. Speaker, that lays out a new horizon for prosperity Response. for Northern Ontario. So from Timmins to Kirkland Lake to Kapuskasing and Red Lake, I'll be able to go and talk about that prosperity for Northern Ontario and tell them that the members offered. Thank you. Next question, the member for the Speaker of James Bay. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Ma question est pour la ministre. Thank you. My question is for the Minister of Francophone Affairs. The Ombudsman of Ontario announced his plan, wanting to replace the independent commissioner of Francophone Affairs. The Ombudsman said that there would be people who would be laid off in the new office. According to the media information, three positions will be eliminated, and now there are 14 employees there. The, uh, Frank the Francophone minister promised that there would be no layoffs uh, within the Ombudsman's uh, office. Uh, did you change the truth? What does this minister have to say to Franco-Ontarian with respect to her promises and to the new reality of the uh, French commissioner? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What I would like to say to the member of the opposition and to Ontarians and to the Franco-Ontarians is that the work of the commissioner will continue within the Ombudsman's office. All the monitoring provisions that exist will continue to exist in the Ombudsman's office. 
the recommendations will be continuing and uh, the complaints will continue. I would like to ask the member to stop telling francophones in Ontario that there will be no more commissioner because it's not the truth, Mr. Speaker. The important work and the monitoring will continue, Mr. Speaker, within the Ombudsman's office. Supplementary question. Monsieur, Mr. Speaker, the fact that we're changing the title does not meet the needs of francophones. Furthermore, we learned that the Francophone Assembly of Ontario has been excluded of the uh, budget uh, in camera meeting. The AFO uh, said that uh, people were laid off. And uh, during an interview with the media, the minister criticized the association, saying and that it should be there for all francophones of Ontario. It is troubling that the uh, spokesperson of Franco-Ontarians has been excluded from the uh, in-camera meeting a few hours after the minister criticized them in the media. How come your ministry is excluding uh, this person from the most important political moment of the year? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As a Minister of Francophone Affairs, I have the honour to work for all Francophones in Ontario. Our government will con continue to uh, take care of uh, Franco-Ontarians' priorities. We will improve uh, first-line services for all Franco-Ontarians. Franco Mr. Speaker, we will encourage uh, economic growth. All this will be explained today. We will talk about it in the budget, which will pre be presented by the finance minister, Mr. Speaker. We are working for all Ontarians, Francophones, Franco-Ontarians, Mr. Speaker. I work with uh, stakeholders from several groups, and I will continue my work, Mr. Speaker, for all Franco-Ontarians. Next question, the member for Brampton South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. Under the leadership of Premier Ford and Minister Smith, this government has already created over 100,000 jobs for the people of this province. I know that our government is committed to reducing red tape and burdensome regulation. By making life easier for our job creators, we are going to create more opportunities for the people of Ontario. Mr. Yeah. Speaker, that is exactly why we passed Bill 66 last week. On the government benches, we're happy about creating jobs and opportunities. Unfortunately, the members opposite are not. The member for Parkdale High Park said during debate that, quote, the best social program Question. is definitely not a job. Could the minister outline for this House why the member is wrong and the steps wow. our government is taking to wow. give Ontarians the dignity of work and they the deserve? Job. Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. Well, thanks very much uh, to my good friend from Brampton for that, that question. I'm very happy to correct the member opposite in her response during debate. As my friend, the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services, always says, the best social program in Ontario is a job. And while the NDP, Mr. Speaker, might not believe that, the people of Ontario do want jobs and they want opportunities. On this side of the aisle, we're working hard to create jobs after 15 dark years under the Liberals, where more than 300,000 manufacturing jobs left the province. If the NDP had their way, Mr. Speaker, that kind of trend would continue in Ontario. Let me quote the member from Kingston and the Islands during debate on Bill 66, talking about manufacturing jobs. He said, there the jobs of the past. I wonder how his counterparts from Oshawa and Windsor feel about that, Mr. Speaker. Sounds Response. like a socialist agenda on that side of the House. That's the real NDP for you. We're doing everything we can to reduce red tape and make sure that Ontario is open for business. Thank you. Supplementary question. 
Speaker, thank you. Back to the minister, and thank you, minister, for the response. It is unbelievable that the member of an opposition would dismiss a sector that employs hundreds and thousands of people across Ontario. While the real NDP may think manufacturing jobs aren't worth fighting for, we know that's not true. They are well-paying, highly skilled jobs. Mr. Speaker, red tape is holding back our job creators, especially our small businesses. During debate on Bill 66, the member for Guelph said, quote, if this legislation were about making life easier for small business, then I'd be on board. I know our bill does exactly that. But the member for Guelph voted against it. What? Could the minister Question. please outline for the House how our government is making life easier for small businesses? Once again, Minister of Economic Development. Well, thanks, uh, th thanks again for another great question from my good friend from Brampton. You know, the parliamentary assistance that I've spoken to, we, we've spoken to hundreds of small businesses since we've taken office, and they've told us what they need to succeed. They need government to get out of the way. Look, I know the opposition thinks that if a small business can't deal with red tape, then they should just close Shame. down. They pretty Shame. much said so during debate and during committee. In the words again of the member from Kingston and the Islands asking for relief from red tape is, quote, reflective of lazy management, no. Mr. Speaker. Wow. On this side of the House, we want small businesses to focus on what matters most. That's creating good jobs, focusing on their business and focusing on their customers, Mr. Speaker. And that's why we've been hard at work in cutting red tape. And I hope the member from Guelph will support Thoughts? us as we continue on this quest to make Ontario open for business, to restore Ontario's competitiveness, and to bring Ontario back to its rightful place as the big Thank you. Next question, member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Speaker, the Investing in Women's Futures Fund provides grants to women's organizations for services like job training, counseling, and support for women experiencing violence. For the past 11 days, these organizations have been without funding. In that time, the Women's Own Resource Centre in South River has lost all of their staff. Shame. Women's Place in Kenora is facing closure, and in my riding, the Times Change Women's Employment Service has reduced staff and will have to reduce their hours, and the list goes on. Will the minister confirm that these vital women's organizations will receive their funding that they need in today's budget? Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. I'd like to thank the member opposite for her question, an important question, but I'll tell you something. At 4 o'clock today, for the first time in 15 years, there will be a path forward for all women on, in Ontario to a better path to balance, to protect what matters most to all of us, but I'm not going to comment on what's in that budget. That's for our finance minister, Vic Fideli, to do at 4 o'clock today yeah. when we set our path to balance for all Ontarians, women included. Women setters from across Ontario were invited to submit applications for the Investing in Women's Futures program earlier this year. And following confirmation of today's 2019-2020 budget, we'll be able to determine based on the review and approval of individual applications. I'm very excited, though, Speaker, for the first time in 15 years, social services, which are the backbone Spons. of Ontario, will be protected and sustainable as a result of our path forward. Thanks to Minister Fidelity. Thank you. Supplementary question. Speaker, where has the minister been for the last 11 days while women have been out services and programs in this province? Yesterday, come to order. I heard the story of Toronto women, of a Toronto woman named Ray, who accessed services at Times Change, and she wrote a passionate letter about the training that she received. And she said, and I quote, Every one of these services was essential to my employment. I would not have succeeded without using these services. By coming into times change, step by step, I gained knowledge and I gained confidence, and I'm very grateful." End quote. Can the minister promise stable funding for these life-saving organizations? Once again, the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. So the member opposite asked where I've been for the last 11 days. I can tell you where I've been for the last 13 years in this assembly, watching the former Liberal government ruin the finances of this province and compromise our value to poor social services, like supporting women who have fleeing domestic violence. It was aided and abetted and supported by 
by the New Democratic Party 97% of the time. So I'll refer to the, pro to, to the finance minister later today on what those budgets will be and we'll uh, go for forward accordingly. But let me be perfectly clear, when this government took office, we made a commitment to women fleeing violence in their communities and in their homes. That's why we are investing an historic $174.5 million to ensure that they're supported. And $11.5 million of that was as a result of my colleagues, my male colleagues, Response. who've taken a strong stand in rural Ontario. So I'll stand here again. As I've always said, it takes strong women to support vulnerable women. It also takes strong men to support vulnerable women. Thank you. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. Restart the clock. The member for Chatham Kent Leamington. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Transportation. Last week, the Minister of Transportation visited my riding of Chatham Kent Leamington to celebrate a huge milestone in public transportation, one that will make life easier for people going between Leamington or Kingsville and Pelee Island. A ferry is not just another form of transportation. Speaker, it's a link between communities, and the ferry plays a significant role in the daily lives of my constituents. Many attendees at the announcement last week were there because for many of them, ferries are an integral part of their life. Whether it's local business owners or farmers transporting goods to and from the island or relying on the ferry to get to work, ferries play a big role Question. in the economy in everyday life. So, Speaker, my question to the minister is simply this. Could the minister share with the legislature the wonderful news that he delivered to my riding last week? Thank you. <laughs> minister of Transportation. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thank the member from Chatham Kent uh, Essex for that uh, question. And it truly was a, a wonderful day uh, just the other week uh, with the member and also former uh, mayor of Healy Island, Rick Mass. It was a great celebration. It was a, a, a cloudy day, but a warm crowd, Mr. Speaker. He was celebrating the fact that uh, the Pelee Islander 2 is now in service. And in fact, uh, April 6 at 8 a.m., it, it went into service. And, and that Pelee Islander 2 will be able to be part of the transportation of over 50,000 people that travel to Pelee Island every year. And these ferries are there for their safety and to make sure they get there on time. In fact, this Pelee Islander 2 will be faster than the former ferry that was there and also carry more passengers and more cars. Mr. Speaker, Bonds. this new ferry is going to benefit local economy of bringing more tourists to Healy Island and make it easier for businesses to move their goods. Mr. Speaker, this is just another one of the important services our government supports. Very much. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. You know, we did have a great day uh, last week down in uh, Leamington ensuring that the beautiful Pelee Islander 2 uh, is getting ready for its first launch. So again, thank you, Minister, for your response. You know, I know that the residents of Chatham, Kent, Leamington and myself were thrilled with this announcement, replacing the original Pelee Islander, which is nearly 60 years old, will provide more modern and reliable service. In everything our government does, every program, every policy, and every service change, we put people first. They're here. We value the experience of Ontarians. Our government is providing relief to the people of Pelee Island and Essex County Question. by reducing wait times with a new larger ferry. Can the minister please share more important details about the Pelee Islander 2? Minister. Thanks again, Mr. Speaker, for that question. And since its arrival in Ontario, the ship's crew have worked diligently to complete extensive training and ensure that the new ferry met all the necessary safety requirements, Mr. Speaker. The Pelee Island 2, as I mentioned earlier, is significantly larger. It will carry 400 people and up to 34 cars. The larger vessel is going to help improve the local economy, improve tourism, and improve recreation for everyone, not only in this whole area. I invite all Ontarians to take a trip to Pelee Island this summer, help support the local economy. Mr. Speaker, this is just another way that we're supporting local economy and especially the tourism. Mr. Speaker, this is a, go this is a government going forward 
whether it's by boat, by car, by bike, by air, or by subway, Mr. Speaker. We're going to invest in Ontario. We're going to get this province moving. We're going to make Ontario a place to stand and a place to grow, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I recognize the member for Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Training Colleges and Universities. Because of this government's elimination of the Youth Job Link, a program that helps young people find employment, and the Employing Youth Talent Program, which helps employers, small business owners, with job training and wages for young people, the Keys Job Centre in Kingston lost over a million dollars in funding on April 1st. Minister, it is already challenging enough for young people in Kingston to find meaningful employment opportunities, and Ontario's youth unemployment rate is higher than the national average and double what it is for the rest of the province. Will the minister admit this was wrong and commit today to reversing these callous cuts? Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities. Speaker. And thank you to the member opposite for that question. We promised the people of Ontario to create good jobs in Ontario and make Ontario open for business. And that is why our government passed the Making Ontario Open for Business Act. And it is shameful that the NDP refused to support legislation that will create good jobs for people across Ontario. We want to make it easier for individuals to join the trades, and the complex, convoluted and constraining system that was previously in place under the Liberals did the opposite. The Premier was clear with the people of Ontario during the campaign that our government will fill the skills gap, provide the training and increase apprenticeships for our young people, for those who need to be reskilled and retrained, Response. and we are well on our way, and I will take no lessons from the NDP. That concludes question period for this morning. Pursuant point of order, the member for Toronto St. Paul's. I didn't get a chance to this morning, but I just wanted to welcome Winona Public School, Afrocentric Alternative School, Rockcliffe Middle School, and the University of Ryerson. They mean a whole lot to me. And welcome to all the students and children in our house. Thank you. It's your house. Thank you. Here's the member for Guelph as a point of order. Point of order as well, Mr. Speaker. I want to welcome my friend Glenn Hodgson, who, along with Trent and Autumn Hodgson, are visiting Queen's Park today. Welcome. Mr. Richmond Hill on a point of order. I gather. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to welcome my great supporter from Richmond Hill, Mr. Adrian Presner. He is joining us at the public gallery. Welcome to Queen's Park, and I know that you'll be very excited with today's budget presentation. Thank you. Pursuant to Standing Order 38A, the member for Sudbury has given notice of his dissatisfaction with the answer to his question concerning the Premier's comments. Question given by the Minister of Labour concerning the Premier's comments. This matter will be debated Tuesday at 6 p.m. We have now a deferred vote on the motion for second reading of Bill 87, an act to amend various statutes related to energy. Call in the members. This is a five-minute bell.
We now ask the members to take their seats. March 28, 2019, Mr. Phillips moves second reading of Bill 87. All those in favour of the motion will please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Rickford. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Bethan Fowler. Mr. Bethan Fowler. Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford. Ms. Elliott. Ms. Elliott. Mr. Yurek. Mr. Yurek. Mr. Mulrooney. Mr. Mulrooney. Mr. McLeod. Mr. McLeod. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Tabolo. Mr. Tabolo. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Pettipees. Mr. Pettipees. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. McNaughton. Mr. McNaughton. Mr. Fullerton. Mr. Fullerton. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Cho Scarborough North. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Samuskoka. Mr. Letcher. Mr. Letcher. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Mr. Gill. Mr. Gill. Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kaland. Mr. Kaland. Mr. Sermon. Mr. Sermon. Mr. Parsons. Mr. Parsons. Mr. Skelly. Mr. Skelly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Ms. Triantafilopoulos. Mrs. Triantafilopoulos. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Sarkaria. Mr. Osterhoff. Mr. Osterhoff. Ms. Park. Ms. Park. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Ms. Kusindova. Ms. Kusindova. Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Gamari. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mrs. Carahalios. Mrs. Carahalios. Mrs. Fee. Mrs. Fee. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Cho Willowdale. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford. Ms. Kanjin. Ms. Kanjin. Mr. Cramp. Mr. Cramp. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Y. Mrs. Tangri. Mrs. Tangri. Mr. Anand. Mr. Anand. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Rashid. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Sandu. Mr. Smith, Peter Brokorth. Mr. Smith, Peter Brokorth. Mr. Baum. Mr. Baum. Mr. Mr. Crawford. Mr. Cazetta. Mr. Cazetta. Mr. Cazetta. Uh, Ms. Dunlop. Ms. Dunlop. Mr. Canapati. Mr. Canapati. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babiki. Mr. Babbitt. Mr. Babbitt. Mr. Pang. Mr. Pang. Mr. Tanigas. Mr. Tanigas. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Sabawi. Mr. Sabawi. All those opposed to the motion will please rise one at a time and be counted. Mr. Tabin. Mr. Tabin. Madam Jelena. Madam Jelena. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Ms. Singh Brampton Center. Mr. Vanta. Mr. Vanta. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Mamakwa. Mr. Yard. Mr. Yard. Ms. Carpoche. Mr. Carpoche. Mr. Shamanta. Mr. Shamanta. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Lindo. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Styles. Ms. Styles. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. Kernahan. Mr. West. Mr. West. Mrs. Stevens. Mrs. Stevens. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Mrs. Gretzky. Mrs. Gretzky. Mrs. French. Mrs. French. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Mr. Singh Brampton East. Ms. Andrew. Ms. Andrew. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Birch. Mr. Birch. Mr. Burns McGowan. Mr. Burns McGowan. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Arthur. Mr. Bourguin. Mr. Bourguin. Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell. Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover. Ms. Morris. Ms. Morris. Mr. Rokosa. Mr. Rokosa. Mr. Hart. Mr. Hart. Ms. Monteith Farrow. Ms. Monteith Farrow. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Hassan. Mr. Schreiner. Mr. Schreiner. The ayes are 69, the nays are 37. The ayes being 69 and the nays being 37, I declare the motion carried. Second the bill, just in that you the law. There's no points of order during a vote. Pursuant to the order of the House dated April 10, 2019, the bill stands referred to the Standing Committee on General Government. Now I can entertain points of order. The Minister of Children, Community and Social Services on a point. This will be very quick. I just wanted to challenge the member from Sudbury to wear an Ottawa 67's jersey on Monday after we eliminate his Sudbury Wolves tonight. <laughs> We're having a very civil question period until you brought up the hockey. Are there any other points of order? Okay. This, this House is in recess until 1 p.m.